advocates or the fight against this, many of you, most of the politicians, you thought the MP or the man was in what is called a political gimmick. Not until some PF officials were suspended in the northwestern province in suspicion or after they were accused of being involved, police, Zambia Police Administration, where Northwestern Province Police Commissioner Hudson Hamachila was transferred from that area to Saka uh, Force Headquarters for possible further redeployment. The changes were made by Republican President Edgar Chagwalungu. This makes our discussion this evening on the finance. How can we end illegal mining in Zambia? To help me discuss on the program, I have Mwinlunga Member of Parliament, Newton Samakai, Decoder Channel 104. Not only that, Ask a Movie, our official Facebook page, is also televising this program. Later on, we'll be able to pick up your phone calls on the number that will be scoring later on. For now, allow me to officially introduce my guest, who is Honorable Newton Samakai, coming from the United Party for National Development, UPND, to help us on how they could be able to deal with some of these issues. I need also to indicate furthermore that uh, indeed there is a man in charge or who is the head of the mines in the UPND as a structure or as a department, but of course we are going to uh, engage him because uh, he has a vast um, knowledge on how we can handle some of these issues. Honorable, good evening and welcome to the finals. Thank you, Innocent. Good evening. Right. I did mention that you are appearing for the first time on my program, The Finance, uh, since it was uh, launched some three years ago. Uh, welcome once again. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, quickly, just for a preamble, as we always begin, uh, for the sake of those that would want to know you as uh, Mwinlunga MP Newton Samakai, who is uh, Newton Samakai? Uh, thank you, Innocent. Um, like you said, my name is uh, Newton Samakai. Uh, member of Parliament for Munlunga uh, Constituents. Um, um, I became a member of Parliament in uh, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just um, uh, in the first uh, uh, term mm -hmm. of my service to church. Mm -hmm. um, I'm married, um, uh, I'm married and uh, I've got uh, five children, mm -hmm. um, three boys, uh, in fact, men now, yeah. and uh, and two uh, daughters. Right. So I've got five children uh, in total. Right. Um, uh, maybe uh, going further, um, um, I worked for um, uh, public service in the um, local government, in councils, uh, first of all, and then thereafter my other life. Uh, uh, contest uh, and um, we have quite um, a large reservoir of uh, of personnel uh, that is trained in, in 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 mining and other you know sectors related to to mining which i think we have failed to harness uh, we have failed to use this uh, resource to to uh, to ensure that uh, our mines are kept afloat and uh, and uh, they generate uh, resources that would be able to uh, provide uh, our, our government, you know, uh, uh, to ensure that they provide uh, services and development, like I said, uh, earlier. So our first failure is to is failing to harness this resource mm. uh, that was trained at a greater uh, uh, expense uh, to the to the nation. Um, the second issue is that I think we we are failing to manage the uh, the investors, mm -hmm. partnering with the investors and ensuring that uh, uh, we understand their needs and they also understand uh, our needs uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, policy formulation that we put in place uh, as, as regards um, uh, mining. Mm -hmm. uh, you are aware that. Uh, 
I think uh, a policy in the in the mines has been uh, a very thorny uh, issue, mm. especially when it comes to uh, taxes. Mm. Um, uh, what seems to be coming out clearly is that the the government mm. fails to sit on the negotiating table and agree with the with the mines so that we have a win-win uh, situation mm. it it doesn't help to force things down the throat of of, of someone it, it it doesn't help uh, because usually uh, if you don't understand each other you, you something that you are pushing may may actually injure you mm. as as the case was in uh, 2019. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think there was there was a problem between government and and the man. They could not quite agree mm. on the on the taxes that the government was uh, was imposing. I think this is this is another mm. another another issue. Um, when we come to policing, there are these issues yeah. the, the the mines that are that are coming up. Mm. So many, actually. Uh, if you talk about Munonga, there could be six or so uh, uh, mines, you know, uh, a mixture of gold, uh, uh, cobalt, uh, copper. Yeah. So we need to police these things. There, are le there is legislation in place, but the problem that we have is we are failing to, to police. There's a lot of illegal mining uh, going on, not just gold. I, I, was, I think I was on TV the other day. I was, I was talking about um, uh, illegal mining uh, going on in Chief, uh, 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 Chief Intambu, mm. and they are using the route uh, as you go to, um, uh, to Maninga in mm. Chief Chubuika. Uh, that's, that's where they are entering from. Mm. So I think that uh, we need to putting people to help us manage these uh, resources. Right. But when we come to, to gold, gold is more precious than the other, uh, you know, uh, uh, minerals that we, we, we're talking about. Right. And uh, we, we have information in the countries where gold has been, uh, has been, has been found. Mm -hmm. There are usually problems. You can't trust anyone. Even, even the security that you put there have, have actually difficulties, mm. you know, because um, uh, they, they tend to help themselves to, to, uh, to their gold. Mm. Unless you put in mechanisms that would be able to ensure uh, that, uh, you know, no one is helping himself or herself to these, uh, to these uh, uh, resources the country would end up uh, and when you may, when you when you say we need to put in a mechanism of uh, managing these uh, uh, um, wealthy what exactly are you talking about because of course in your explanation you did mention that uh, the problem that we have here is uh, the mismanagement of these mines you also went further honorable to mention that uh, the other issue is with regards to uh, um, we are failing or the government is failing to bring up for better policies you know, uh, that can also be favorable to the, to, the, to the foreign investors. What's the solution? Well, um, in, in terms of policies, I think the solution is consultations. You know, um, uh, Consulting who? Consulting the stakeholders. It and is who important. are the stakeholders? The stakeholders are the people that are supposed to be affected, mm. that are affected by the policy that you are putting in place. Right. Those are the stakeholders. Mm. And it's important that they are ahead. Right. Perhaps they, they, they could have better solutions than you are trying to, to put in place. Mm. So stakeholder mm. consultation is very, very uh, important in any governance system. Mm. In any governance system, stakeholder consultation is very, very uh, important, even in, in, in mines or in, in any other sector. It is important that the stakeholders are actually consulted uh, so that they help you because they will even own the, the policy and help you implement the policy uh, properly. Mm. So um, when I referred to um, 
proper policing of 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 the of the uh, minerals like like gold. Yeah, sure. so obviously, you know what is happening in 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 Kasenseli, mm -hmm. and and you know that uh, the president was in in Kasenseli, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he gave uh, a directive mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, whatever was happening mm -hmm. must stop from that day when he went there. Mm -hmm. Uh, nobody should be able to to mine uh, gold, mm. and uh, uh, the police was was put there yeah. to be able to uh, to secure, mm. you know, the the place. Mm. But uh, you know, like I said in my opening remarks, uh, yeah. people continued going there. Of course, with the help of the police, they were getting the the gold and they were and they were selling yeah. Be before we get to your area i know that uh, you are passionate to talk about uh, kasenseli um issue Mwinlunga because it's your mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. but before we get to that uh, i wanted to find out from you in terms of uh, of course we are talking about over 50 years now as a country we failed to find uh, to build capacity in our own people our own investors that could be able to manage those uh, uh, mines my question, Honorable, would be, who is to blame for that? We are talking about, uh, we've got a PF in charge today. That has been there for, we are talking about, should be, is it, uh, should we give them 11 years? About summer there, or yeah. 10 years? For argument's sake, we, uh, we had the UNIP by then. And of course, according to history, uh, it was, there was a time when this country was, the whole population was fed through the copper. This country has been producing or was producing. They could not build capacity in our local investors. It came again to the MMD. We talk about the, 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 the Chilova himself, the later uh, uh, Freddy Chilova. He couldn't manage to build capacity in our local investors. We go further to the Manawasa. As well, even him, he couldn't do, he couldn't do much. Again, he left the mantle to uh, Arabi. Today, we've got a PF. Whom should we blame? Should we say maybe Dr. Kaunda, he went to sleep at some point, Manawas as well, Chiluva as well, until the PF, they are also sleeping? Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would want to look at the issue that you have raised uh, in uh, two angles. Yeah. The first angle is, mm. is that um, uh, capacity mm. in terms of human resource was built right. over years. Okay. Of course, during uh, 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 ZCCM and you know, other uh, uh, investors during those years, mm. a lot of people were trained right. in, uh, in, in, in the mines, in various uh, you know, mm. uh, departments or sectors of, of the mine. Right. So, Capacity in that area, in terms of human resource, that was built. Right. But perhaps what you, 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 you are now looking at is, is the issue of uh, uh, resources to be able, mm. for Zambians to have the resources to be able to invest right. in, the, in the mines. Right. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Okay. And um, really, this is a bigger problem. Mm. It's a bigger problem in the sense that it's sup supposed to be supported by the economy. Mm. If you look at the, our, our economy, it's just next to rudimentary. I mean, it's, mm. it's, it's so small. Right. So the problem of capacity in terms of businessmen to be able to inject resources into, into, the, into the mining mm. is coming as a result of the size of our economy. Mm. People do not have adequate resources to be able to invest. And this is why always we are calling for uh, investors to come from uh, elsewhere mm. to invest in the, in the mines. Mm. So really, um, I would want you to, to, to look at the capacity in, in two ways. Mm. One is the human resource, which I think uh, the government, um, working in conjunction with the, with the investors then, mm. did quite a commendable job during um, uh, Kaunda's time and, and also MMD, a lot of people were trained. Mm. But do we have businessmen with adequate resources to be able to invest mm. in the mines? The answer is, is no. The answer is no. Right. 
Why? The reason is that uh, our economy is, is very small. Mm. It, it cannot uh, support uh, such, uh, such an investment in, in, in the mines. All right. Interesting, um, Honorable. Uh, and one of the disheartening issue is um, in t Zambia, if you look at uh, where we are today, we are more like the beggars. You know, for us to survive, we have to depend on other people to feed us. It is starts from here that the mines we are talking about now and a number of companies, they are being owned by the foreign, foreigners, foreign investors, with the due respect I have for them. Again, we are a Christian nation. Very interesting and very important. We've got, uh, God has, uh, has blessed this country with the copper we are talking about, with the uh, cobalt you talked about, You've also mentioned about now the God. The question is, why Zambia has remained one of the poorest nations in Africa as well as the world at large, with all these mineral wealth? Um, uh, thank you, uh, Innocent. Again, I, I, I think that it's a question of um, mm. a management. It's a question of how do we manage mm. our resources? Mm. I, I heard you talking about, uh, you know, uh, failing to feed ourselves mm. and all that. Mm. I think that Zambia should not fail to feed itself. Mm. Okay? We, sh we should not. Mm. We should be able to produce enough food mm. even to feed our, our neighbors. Mm. Angola gets its food mostly from Brazil, mm. and yet we are here. We have adequate rains, good soils. Mm. We, we, we should be able to produce adequate food to uh, export to Angola, mm. to export to another large market in, uh, in, in Congo. Yeah. Why are we failing, is the question. Mm. We don't have proper policies that should be able to answer to the needs of those markets in the neighboring uh, countries. I think... Uh, and we should provide uh, those uh, policies, really, because this is a song that has been sung for quite some time now, for so many years. Those that were there uh, 30 years ago, they were told, we lack proper policies. Those that were there 15 years ago, again, they were told the same things. And by people like you, they who are into politics, we should provide those good, conducive, and uh, convincing policies, really. Um, you know, um, policies mm. are supposed to be driven by uh, the government. Mm. Those that are managing the country, mm. those that are in leadership, are supposed to manage the, the policies, right. are supposed to formulate the policies. Obviously, um, we have also uh, stakeholders like uh, the civil society. Right. They also push for policies, you know, for their interests uh, to be uh, taken on board by the government. And CSOs by have government. been there before. They've been there since the memorial. Yes, they, they have. been part and parcel of the government as well. Yes. You didn't mention your preamble. Yes, they have been mm. there. But uh, you see, you need to be receptive to uh, what people are proposing. Mm. You need to be res uh, receptive. Right. And you, you also need to think out of the box and see mm. what is it that is lacking, you know, that is required in order to move things, mm. to move the economy, you need to, in order to provide for your, for your people. Mm. All these things come through the uh, policies. And the policies are supposed to be driven mm. by a party in, in government. Mm. That is why you have these, you know, uh, uh, political parties mm. trying to struggle for power because they have got uh, uh, certain issues that they would want to, to, to move forward, you know, to answer to some of the challenges uh, that uh, uh, the uh, PF government uh, doesn't, need, doesn't seem to have answers. Mm. So policies are driven by a party that is in government. Mm. Policies are driven also by private members but you can only do much if you're a private member if you are a civil society you can only do much you can only influence but 
the person who is able to say, well, this policy will be taken on board and we're, we are pushing it, it's those that are in government. And interesting enough, because uh, you are also a parliamentarian, you know, uh, the people that are in charge in, you know, uh, making laws, good laws that can able to drive, to help drive the, 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 the country's economy, you know. And really for me, or for you to tell the people that are watching us right now, to say it dependent on how they, they receive those that are, that are in government, somebody is going to doubt you because you are a lawmaker. Mm -hmm. Don't you see to make better and good policies that can help to revamp or develop these minds? Yes, um, you see, like, like, like I said, um, that uh, there are a lot of stakeholders mm. in this issue, yeah. but there is a driver, okay? okay? Mm. There, is, there is a driver, and the driver here is, is the party that is, in, that is in government. That's the one that should drive. Even when a private uh, uh, member pushes in a, a motion, you, 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 I'm sure you are aware that the uh, Honorable uh, Nkombo, I think, uh, in, uh, in, uh, just last year, in, in 2019, mm -hmm. pushed in a, a motion on the, on the environment, okay, mm -hmm. on the environment. That motion did not pass. It was shot down. Mm -hmm. But next, what happened? The president came to parliament and he was talking about the same thing, mm -hmm. which his main had shut down. So, you can... Well, you, where does it post uh, the behavior of you, members of parliament, our lawmakers, the people that are supposed to legislate, you know, this country, where, like you are lamenting right now, and of course we saw what you were talking about, someone brings up a very good, uh, you know, a police that if implemented, it was going to be perhaps, uh, you know, of a benefit to the country. And then the other group, they begin to shoot that down. This was the first time it has happened. You know, not only that from the UPND side, uh, and also from the ruling party side, where they will bring this, uh, 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 you know, uh, a proposal or this uh, motion, and then those, because they are in the opposition, they have to, be, to, to, to stand from the opposition side. Where, where does it put your, 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 your morality, the people that are making the laws? Um, I, I, would, I would tell you something Are you that there I for have competition? Maybe I should simplify my question. Are you there for competition as members of parliament because you belong to the opposition? You have to, mm. to, to oppose whatever mm. no. those in power brings? No, it, it should not be like that. Mm. We, we're supposed to save the people. Mm. Any motion that comes to parliament, for as long as that motion is good, it so can save interest. the mm. people. It's mm. in the public interest. That motion must be supported. Sure by both the opposition and those that are in, are in government. Mm. But unfortunately, the culture, I, I think this is an African culture. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, the culture is such that, uh, uh, you know, when a motion uh, comes, if it is brought by the opposition, no matter how good it is, the, the backbenchers on the, on the right may not support it. Mm. And, and that's, where, that's where we have a problem. As individuals, as individuals, they can support uh, policies that they believe or motions that they believe are good for Zambia. But for as long as the party thinks that this is not in their interest as a party, mm. they are whipped. They advise not to support it because. Right. Honorable, allow me to just uh, uh, try if we can able to pick up one or two phone calls. Uh, Kola, good evening. Hello. Kola, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. Please uh, tell us your name and the area you're calling us from. Please, uh, Mr. Mwinlunga, Jonathan from Mwinlunga. Mr. Jonathan, how is Mwinlunga this evening? Fantastic. Please go, go ahead with your contribution. You've got uh, two minutes. Please, yeah, uh, some time behind. Sure, man. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm my big brother, Mr. Samuel. I don't know uh, how. What? What are the other uh, solutions uh, is that opposition party and the area member 
Thank you so much, Mr. Jonathan. We appreciate for that phone call. Right, so the phone line now is uh, open. You can able to call us and uh, give your submissions uh, regarding the topic we have on your screen right now, where we are looking at uh, how can we end illegal mining in Zambia. My guest is uh, Honorable Newton Samakai, Munlunga, Member of Parliament, and uh, vis a vis discussing the uh, happenings at uh, Kasenseli. Uh, good mind. Let's pick up another phone call. Call up, Hello. Call up, Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm okay. Please uh, tell us your name and the area you're calling us from. Thank you. Uh, you are talking to Brother Sitali. Brother Sitali, uh, where are you calling us from? I'm calling you within Lusaka. Uh, good morning. I mean, good evening, my honorable. Good evening, uh, Mr. Sitali. Thank you so much, and uh, we are grateful for your contribution. 
My guest on the program is uh, Honorable Newton Samakai Mwilunga, member of parliament. Uh, we are receiving your phone calls and uh, you will be able to give uh, uh, those reactions. And uh, remember, we are also uh, implementing uh, uh, the COVID-19 measures. Uh, hence, you can see, I'm um, struggling actually, I need to confess, I'm struggling to um, just uh, give those uh, good pronunciation in terms of words. But uh, we have no option, Honorable. And uh, I've been told by my, my, my guest that uh, I have to put on uh, a mask. So I have no option but to do that. Uh, your reaction, please. Um, thank you very much. I, I, I think um, um, my brother Stale just made a, a, a comment, mm -hmm. and I think his comments are appreciated. Right. And um, uh, Mr. Manjomba, my brother from Mwinulunga, mm -hmm. uh, wants to know what are the solutions mm -hmm. that uh, we could have mm -hmm. that could be added to what government has already uh, put in place. Yes. Um, I think that. Uh, I'll give you a minute so that we we'll pick up more phone calls. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that uh, what the government has, uh, has done by, by putting uh, uh, security at Kasensere uh, copper mine is, is good, okay? But we're just disappointed that uh, the same people that have been put there are the ones that are helping themselves to the maze that they have been given to, to look after. You know, it's like putting monkeys in a, in a field of, of maize. But perhaps this could be stopped. I think with the changes that have taken place and with the suspensions that have taken place, uh, perhaps uh, this could do reduce. But my suggestion is that uh, we need, government must uh, move in very, very fast to find an investor. I'm aware that uh, uh, ZCCMIH has taken up the responsibility to gold, uh, I mean to mine the gold, um, uh, because uh, they have been given that uh, mandate. I had a nice discussion with the, with the chief executive and uh, I hope that uh, uh, they will move very, very uh, quickly to ensure that, uh, you know, they uh, get hold of the, of the mine uh, and these people that are coming in to steal uh, gold here and there can stop because then uh, mechanisms from a business point of view can be put in in place and uh, such a pilfering would, would, would stop. Uh, when did this uh, illegal mining uh, started in your area? Because like I did mention in my preamble that when this started uh, you were among the few people that stood out. You were almost on a daily basis in the news highlighting, reporting, telling the people of Zambia and also the government. Mm. But others called you names. Yeah. You know, people thought it was you were doing, you know, what they call politi politicking. You know, mm. politicking. Mm. When did this uh, scheme start? Well, I, I think the, the, uh, the gold was discovered uh, uh, last year. And uh, obviously people started, you know. But this area mm. is under license. There are people that hold licenses for this uh, for this area, mm. and um, those were doing uh, explorations. Right. But obviously, there are others who were going there to to steal. Mm. And later on, when the president went went there, they, they, even those who were uh, carrying out explorations were told to stop, mm. and policemen mm. were put no. there to mm. to guard mm. uh, the area. It's during that period. Even when the, 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 the directive from the president was subsisting, mm. uh, people continued going to get, to get the, uh, the gold. It's, it's actually so up to you now. When this um, act started, um, it began on a slower pace. Yes. When the president deployed police officers yes. to man that area, it became worse. Yes. When, when, when the policemen were put there, mm. when the president went to, uh, to say this place now uh, is, uh, is prohibited, no mm. one should no come area. here, mm. it's a no-go area, that was the time when people now, it was like an alarm was, you know, pressed and everyone know, know, knew that there's oh, there is something mm. happening this side and uh, they were all trekking to Munirunga. 
And, um, but how possible that um, even after the president uh, gave a, a directive um, instructing the police officers to take charge of that area, still more the activities, the illegal, illegal activities never stopped? Well, I think that is a, that's a very difficult question for me to, to answer because mm. um, I have uh, grown up mm. and uh, I've been in public service. I know that uh, when the president speaks, it's, it's, it's a policy matter and uh, any citizen should be able to respect the, the decision mm. of, the, of the president. But it was shocking, and, and that's why I even came on TV, it was shocking that... Uh, the party cadres themselves, mm. you know, in the, in the president's party, the officials, you know, who were put there, including the officials in the Boma, you know, heads of departments, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, were actually involved disregarding the presidential directive. Mm. We have a problem. If you cannot uh, respect the presidential di directive, then you have a problem. We don't have two governments. We have one government. If the president speaks, everyone should be able to respect what the president has said. It was disheartening to see that the people that are under the president are the ones that are disregarding the presidential uh, directive. Who are those uh, people that were behind this uh, illegal uh, mining in Kansas? I remember at some point, of course, we were summoned by the police to just uh, share uh, some of the information regarding this. And um, we are privileged this evening to host you and the people of Zambia are watching right now. Uh, those that might have missed the people that were behind this scandal. Um, Suspects in short. Um, innocent, I, I think that uh, uh, it will not be right for me to give out names now because um, uh, the investigators are on the ground. I'm, I'm aware about that. I, when I was talking to some of them. They are already on the ground. They are investigating uh, this, this issue. So I can't go into mentioning names. And this is perhaps, uh, you know, brings me to the issue of... Just uh, hold on your thoughts there. My director tells me that uh, we also engage in more of our view viewers' uh, submissions, important. Caller, good evening. Caller, good evening. Hello? Caller, good evening. Right. Please uh, call us back again. Uh, I'm told we need to engage in more the viewers because uh, yeah. uh, it's giving us a feedback if That's we right. know our, our viewers is important. So the number is uh, on your screen right now. Uh, we are engaging you. My guest on the program is Honorable Samakai. My name is uh, Innocent Stiri IP. And of course, uh, we are uh, in the COVID-19 implementing measures such that you can't see the person speaking, but uh, we have to do that. Kola, good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. It's uh, Mr. Manjomba here for me. Mr. Manjomba. Yes, sir. Please go ahead uh, with it. Yeah. Yes, my, my, my question to my Honorable uh, MP, uh, Mungu Nakosho, hmm. uh, was to find out if other uh, efforts and solutions hmm. that will be added to government uh, engaging this here as an investor. Mm. And uh, the other solution of government deploying uh, police to the site to mine illegal mining, mm. uh, those are certain other uh, solutions that government has put in place. Yes. Mm. Now, to assist into those uh, solutions, what other solutions can an area member of parliament who will be actually advised to assist in this illegal mining? Then, too, um, you know, looking at the history of uh, where we're coming from, all these sites that are in Mwenilunga have not been um, uh, discovered by legal um, uh, miners mm. or legal uh, people that have been given documents to go and uh, 
place for his lingo uh, or is covered by legal minors. So it's this advantage in government and advantage in everyone. So what then effort are we going to render to such people that are claiming are illegal minors? Mm. Are we going to legalize them so that perhaps we discover more time? Those are my questions and that is the information that I want to hear from my honorable uh, MC, uh, Mr. Kamakai. My brother, thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe you can attempt to answer, uh, give, to, let's give a, a convincing uh, answer to him. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, yes. Uh, he's right to say that um, uh, uh, Kasenseli Mine, as, 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 uh, as well as uh, other uh, mines or minerals, are uh, discovered by illegal uh, miners mm. and um, I, I think in in this in in the case of Kasenseri when we say illegal mm. it's, it's because you know the mineral has already been uh, uh, discovered okay and and uh, the government has put measures in place that no one else should go there right. and then they continue going there and those are the ones that we are calling we are calling illegal obviously even those that are still going to other places to discover. Mm. They are illegal, yes. But like he says, they are discovering uh, minerals that would be helpful uh, to the nation. Um, what I would want to see mm. is a situation where when these minerals are, are discovered, mm. the communities in those areas where the, the, these minerals are being discovered mm. must be taken on board. Even, even, in, even in, in policing the area uh, where there are, there are these uh, minerals, I think that the communities should also be uh, integrated mm. in the, w with, the, with the police force, you know, so that, uh, 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 because they know the people better. They, they know the, 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 the area better. They would be able to advise their colleagues that uh, this thing is for the good of all of us. Right. But when you leave them out, and the others are stealing, right. then, then, then you have an issue. Right. But let me just uh, pick up uh, more phone calls, Honorable. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, please tell us your name and the area you're calling us from. Yes, this is Albert Mkangara calling from Tendere East. Uh, Albert uh, calling us from um, Tendere East within Lusaka. No, Honorable Mr. Samaka, I think I'm one. I'm one. I'm one. Well, there. Uh, what I want to ask you is uh, about the, the issue of uh, mining in Manunga. Why is it that the president is concerned about the, the, the gold? He's not concerned about the load which people are using going that side. I want to help you guys can help me to get understand of that. Okay. Uh, are you able to to, to stick to the topic so that we do not uh, maybe uh, divert his mind. Let's, okay. let's, let, let's stick to the topic so that we do not give him a lot of um, uh, pressure or um, reasons to, to find. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you so much. Thank right, you. so you can uh, call us and uh, give us your submission. My guest on the program is uh, Honorable uh, Newton Samakai Mwilunga, Member of Parliament, and my name is uh, Innocent Piri. IP in short. Let's uh, hear from uh, the Honorable. Uh, let's move on as we, of course, I'm sure you've answered that question. You want to yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure whether he's satisfied, but, but the point right. is that uh, mm. um, uh, in policing these areas, mm. the government must include the communities. Right you know in 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 this uh, in this operation right. uh, because they know the people better and they know the areas uh, better mm -hmm. and also that uh, the people that discover these minerals you know must, must somehow benefit right. from from you know uh, from these uh, operations they should not be forgotten mm -hmm. once the operations begin uh, they must be remembered they must be integrated mm -hmm. in the in the in the system in the system right Kola Grivin. I'm all right. Please uh, tell us your name and the area you're calling us from. Yes, uh, Arnold. Uh, I'm calling from Fuwe. That's Arnold, is it? Yes, yes. All right, uh, Arnold uh, from Fuwe. How is it in Fuwe this evening? Fuwe is cool. 
Right, right. Go yeah. ahead. You've got two minutes to give your submission. Okay. Well, as I said, it is um, how can we end the illegal mining in Zambia? Mm. Uh, it, it, it's a good question, and I feel the best people are placed to answer that, that, that question is those in power. Mm. I say so because uh, recently, Kobe TV was only at the point where uh, gold has been missing for winning where well, they fit with the culture. And in that report, when this was uh, asked, he said many activities were going on and he saw all this. Thank you so much, uh, point taken. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Let, let, let me just say a sure. comment on that. Um, uh, in, in fact, Arnold, um, it should not be a report like, uh, like a commission of inquiry. Uh, this is a criminal matter. Okay? This is a criminal matter. All those that are involved in this scam uh, must be visited by the law. In fact, they must be arrested. Yeah, they must be arrested because this this is a crime that is this is uh, which is being uh, committed here. So it's not like a report going to the people of Zambia that they should know who stole. No, those who 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 have stolen uh, the gold, those that are involved, must be arrested. And I'm sure they will be arrested. Is it? They should be arrested. Yeah. They should be arrested. And, and that's why the, the investigators are already there. But I'm, I'm just wondering why the, the government or, or the party in government is sending a delegation to Munirunga to do what? Because this is a criminal matter. The police are already there. They say the, the, the investigators are already there. So why send a high-powered delegation to Munirunga on the same matter. To do what? Are they going to intimidate the investigators? Because that is what we are going to think. Why should, why should they go there when the police are already investigating the matter? Of course, uh, Honorable, maybe thinking is allowed. Uh, those are uh, uh, part officials coming from the PF. Honorable Brian mm -hmm. uh, Mduvile is uh, chief government uh, uh, whip. Is it chief whip? Yes. You know. Maybe even them, they are concerned. It's, they are the people that are in charge, managing these um, uh, affairs. No. We, we they are affected. No, 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 no. We, we, governance doesn't work like that. They feel they can still work hand in hand. No, no, no. Because no wonder they have taken this uh, radical decision to no. suspend their own chairperson. No. Jackson Kungo? No, I disagree. Because, because those allegations that the, perhaps uh, it could the be... The police more. are already there. Mm. The police are adequate. They would be able to investigate that as well as to wait for a report from the police. If they want to take a, 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 a punitive measures against their member, they would have waited for a report from, uh, from the police. What are they going to do? Mm. Are they going to investigate? What skills do they have to, to, to investigate a criminal matter? Those are just politicians. What have they going to do? 
We are questioning as Zambians. It's just confusion in the management of public affairs. It's confusion. Are you happy now that um, the president, of course, has uh, cracked his whip to whip the uh, commissioner? He's no longer there. Yes, the but... man you never trusted at some point. And that, I, I remember you, you giving the police... Um, was it a seven days ultimatum and the likes? Yes. And your answer is finally out. Yes. Um, uh, yes, I, I can say that um, uh, this is welcome, uh, but it's work in progress. We are waiting for thorough investigations mm. because we want those that are involved in that scam mm. to be arrested so that they can send a message to other people who think that uh, uh, public goods can be, can be easily converted into someone's pocket. Mm. It should not be like that. So it is work in progress. Our uh, first step has been taken. I think that is very good. Mm. But it's work in progress. And w our eyes and ears are open. We want to see how we are going to conclude uh, this matter of uh, uh, God thefts in, in Mwinlung. The party as well, the PF, does it deserve a kudos from your, your side? The, or take the, the PF, do they deserve a kudos? Um, oh yes, oh yes, um, uh, so far yes, but let's see how it ends, <laughs> I think that's the, that's the issue. Mm. The issue is how does it end, uh, you know, because we're not going to be blinded by suspensions and then thereafter we are told no, so no, 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 the matter must be investigated and thoroughly. Mm. I think there are a lot of people in, in Munirunga that, that are ready to give evidence to this, to this matter. So it must be concluded in a manner that will satisfy the people of Zambia, in a manner that will satisfy the people of, of Munirunga. The beginning is good. We, I, I thank them for, for doing what they have done this far. Right. Let's pick up more phone calls now as we get to other developmental um, uh, topics. Caller, good evening. Uh, good evening, boss. How are you? And how is Mufaka? I'm calling you from Mdola. My name is Mlonda. Mr. Mlonda. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for calling us. Uh, please go ahead with your contribution. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, let me greet you, the Honorable. Please. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Honorable. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much. We appreciate and I'm told we've got um, uh, five minutes or six or so before we close uh, the program. Thank you so much. Right. Um, I don't know. I believe there was no question there. Yeah, but, uh, there, there was no question except just, uh, just a comment. Yes, I, I think that uh, 
what he's seeing is what we are seeing uh, all of us mm. and uh, we, we've been asking government to, to speed up the process uh, of finding uh, an, an investor for as long as they don't find an investor mm. for as long as ZCCM um, uh, uh, that has expressed interest to go and, uh, and, and mine uh, uh, with a mandate given by by government, if they don't move in very, very quickly, we will continue having these problems of the police fighting with the people that would want to get some gold there, or even the police uh, themselves, you know, growing ideas that uh, uh, they should help themselves to, uh, uh, to the uh, items that they are, they are looking after. So I, I agree with him. The government must move very, very uh, fast to uh, turn, you know, that mine into a business uh, uh, venture and then it, it begins self-guarding uh, itself. Dressing uh, Honorable, as we conclude, um, you are a member of parliament for uh, Mwinlo and uh, so far you've saved, um, you say, should we say four years so far, remaining with one or um, three and a yeah. half? Yeah. So, what can you account in terms of uh, development from all what you promised the people of Mwinlunga uh, prior to the 2016 elections until where we are today. What can you account to those that are watching us right now? Do you feel you are within the promises you made or you have not done much? Uh, thank you. Or perhaps uh, what do you need to achieve? Uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, um, I'm one member of parliament who, who has um, a, a, a service charter mm. with the, the people that I serve, with the people of, of Mwinilunga. And um, uh, the promise was that at the end of three years, we should be able to sit and account mm. for what uh, I could have done and uh, what maybe the failures that I could have encountered and explain to people sure. why I have failed. I should have done that this time, mm. but because of the COVID, I, I was unable uh, to do it. But I went on radio, and uh, I believe that uh, I was also on movie, uh, trying to explain to the people what is it that uh, we've done according to the promises that, that I made. Mm. And um, one of the promises that I made was uh, visitations, okay? which I, uh, Munrunga is very fast, and, and, and I said uh, I could only visit once per area in a year, because I've divided Munrunga in 112 uh, areas, settlements that I need to visit. And um, uh, you can't visit three times each one of them. I can only visit once a year. And I think that I have done um, three times, and in, in three years, I think on that one, I've gotten it. I also promised, you know, um, uh, certain, certain things to be done by me as a member of, of, of parliament. Uh, for instance, uh, buying blankets for the, for the um, uh, uh, clinics, uh, 22 uh, clinics now. I buy blankets uh, every uh, after five years. I was just completing uh, delivering for 20 uh, 19 that I have done. I've, I've spent 312,000 uh, kwacha on my constituents in, 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 uh, in buying cement, in, in buying uh, uh, roofing sheets, in, and, and helping them here and, and there. Okay? I've, I've accounted that to my people. And um, as far as CDF is concerned, as far as uh, development from CDF is, uh, is concerned, uh, I can only do so much with the, the assistance of uh, a government with a constituents development fund. We have only received the full amount uh, for 2018 and in 2017 we received half. So my performance as far as uh, uh, CDF is concerned can, 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 only, can only be equal to what I've received from, from government. But what I would say is that uh, 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 we have a project in every ward. Out of the 19, 19 wards, we have a project in every ward from the 
three. Right. Two point three million that uh, I have received in three years. Right. We, we we have done something which can be which can be seen. As we end the program, I want to ask you a question, Honorable. Uh, your take as a member of parliament, not as a UPND member, but as a patriotic parliamentarian. And I'm asking this question not to get UPND's position, but your position as an MP. What is your take on uh, Bill number 10? Um, as a Samakai, mm. as a Samakai, I don't support Bill 10. Right. And I'll give you reasons. Sure. You remember, when we started this program, mm. I was talking about the formulation of policies and consultations. Right. Very, very important. And at the time that uh, 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 PF was, was, was going for, uh, for that conference, mm. uh, where they passed uh, uh, those resolutions, the church and the civil society did not agree Okay, they said the consultations and even the way people were picked, hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it was not uh, inclusive. Right. Okay, so from, from that point, you can, you can see that this process is already fraud. So it is fraud from the way to go. Why should we push something to the extent that we should spend so much money if that bill is innocent? Right. Okay, if that bill is